Hello and uh, welcome to this lecture. This lecture is about this number e that we that we defined in the previous one, the uh, uh, exp of 1, right, e and its relationship to the exponential function. It turns out this e and the exponential function are very, very intimately connected and this lecture will tell you what it is. Okay, first let us look at this number e. It is a very, very famous number in mathematics, exp of 1, which is summation n equals 0 to infinity 1 by n factorial. If you write it down, it is 1 plus 1 plus 1 by 2 factorial plus 1 by 3 factorial plus dot dot dot. Okay, remember this convention 0 factorial is 1. Okay, we will keep this convention in these definitions. Okay, so the value of e, if you actually keep evaluating it, we know that this converges, and if you keep evaluating it, it comes to something like this 2.71828182845905 dot 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 dot. It keeps on going, right? It never stops. Okay, so this is called. Uh, Euler's number or Euler's constant, this number E has a name, uh, E U L E R Euler. Uh, this, is, this is named after uh, him, he's a very, very, very famous mathematician. This E is a uh, no notation and symbol for it. Okay. E turns out is an irrational number, it is not a rational number. Okay. This can be proved, and uh, I do not going to prove it for you here, but it can be proved it is irrational. Remember, root 2 is irrational, like that. E is also irrational, but it is in fact more diabolically irrational than even root 2. Okay? Root 2 is irrational, but it is called algebraic, meaning uh, if you take a, line, a, a, a take a quadratic equation like x squared minus 2 with uh, you know integer coefficients, x squared as coefficient 1, a constant coefficient is minus 2, right? So, this is the integer coefficient. So, root 2 is a root of this, right? Square root 2, if you plug it in here, you get 0, is not it? It is a root of this polynomial x squared minus 2, this is the quadratic polynomial. It turns out E is so irrational that it is not at all algebraic, as in there is no polynomial with integer coefficients for which E is a root. Okay? So, it is a fascinating number, is not it? So, you have faced, first time we are facing such a number which is irrational, we have not proved it, but it is not even algebraic. There is no polynomial with integer coefficients for which E is a root. So, these kind of numbers are there. Pi is also such an, a non-algebraic non rational number some very interesting numbers of this type. Okay? So, this is slightly more technical theory, we, we will not get into that too much, but for us this e is an important value and its relationship with the exponential function is what is most important and we are going to explore that in the next result. Here is the result here. Okay? So, let me start by once again reiterating what is this is, this is the exp of x is this power series definition of a function. Of course, this is convergent for all x uh, and then so we, we, we can rate it like that. This particular value e is x equals 1. So, 1 plus 1 by 1 plus 1 by 2 factorial, 3 factorial, so on. If you actually evaluate it, it comes to some 2.718 dot 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 dot. Okay? So, this is the uh, picture here. So, how, how am I going to connect this function to e? You know, on the face of it, it looks like e is just one value of this function. Why should the function depend on e? Okay? It turns out there is a very, very close connection between exp of x and e. Okay? And this slide is going to show you how. The first is, let us say n is an integer okay? and I am evaluating exp at n. Okay? I am evaluating exp at n. Remember, n sometimes we use as dummy summation, but forget about that. n is an integer and instead of x, I am going to put n here. Then what will I get? 1 plus n plus n squared by 2 factorial plus n cube by 3 factorial, so on. I will get some number. It turns out that number that you get is the same as this number e raised to the power n. Okay? So, you have 1 plus n plus n squared by 2 factorial plus n cube by 3 factorial so on, right? That and 1 plus 1 plus 1 by 2 factorial plus 1 by 3 factorial plus so on raised to the power n are one and the same thing. They are the same thing. And that follows by the additive form, addition formula, very simple application of the addition formula, right? By the addition formula, if you use it repeatedly, you know exp of x1 plus x2 plus xn is the same as exp of x1 times exp of x2 times exp of xn. You simply put all these guys to be equal to 1. So, you get n here, you get 1 here, 1 here, 1 here and that becomes e power n. On the left hand side, you have exp of n. What a wonderful simple proof, right? So, notice the connection between exp of x evaluated at integers and the number e. If you evaluate exp at 2, you get e squared. If you evaluate exp at 3, you get e cubed. If you get e, evaluate exp at 4, you get e power 4, so on. That is it. 2.718 dot 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 raised to the power 4 is the same as evaluating exp of 4. Okay? What about negative integers? I have said I am claiming this for all integers. 
what I put negative integers for negative integers also this is true exp of minus 1 is e power minus 1 which is 1 by e exp of minus 2 is e power minus 2 which is 1 by e square okay why is that true how will you prove it for negative integers think about it for just a second you have to use the inverse formula right exp of n times exp of minus n equals 1 so exp of minus n is 1 by exp of n which is 1 by e power n which is e power minus n okay so this result with the addition formula and the inverse formula which is the same as addition formula gives you this expression so notice once again how we start with simple basic properties and repeatedly use it to derive more interesting fundamental results like this okay exp of n is now becoming e power n for every integer n we have shown this for integer you can imagine where i will go next from integers we always try to go to rational numbers it turns out for rational numbers also any x naught which is p by q rational exp of x naught is same as e power x naught okay now this is becoming very very interesting right this function exp if you evaluate it at any rational number like like for instance 1 by 2 if x naught is 1 by 2 exp evaluated at 1 by 2 is the same as square root of e right e power 1 by 2 square root of e right if i put x equals half i'll get 1 plus half plus 1 by 4 by 2 factorial, 1 by 8 by 3 factorial, so on. That is the same as square root of 1 plus 1 plus 1 by 2 factorial plus 1 by 3 factorial. It's not at all an obvious result, right? But that is true. And that comes by this uh, property. And it's easy to prove. I'll, I'll show it to you. The crucial observation is if x0 is p by q, q times x0 is p and q times x0 is an integer. Okay. q times x0 is an integer. It's basically exp of qx0 is exp of x0 plus dot 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 plus x0. Once this integer property comes, now you can do addition rule. Okay, it doesn't matter what x0 is, exp of x0 plus dot 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 q times x0 is the same as exp of x0 raised to the power q. This is just the addition formula. So, notice what has happened here exp of q times x0 for any rational x0 uh, is any x0 in fact, right? Any x0 doesn't matter rational or not becomes exp of x0 power q. Is that okay? I hope you saw that. Okay. Now, this exp of x0 power q, which is the same as exp of qx0, equals e power qx0. How did I get this? Because qx0 is integer. Okay. Because qx0 is integer, and I have already shown that true, that's true for integer, exp of qx0 becomes e power qx0. So, this is the property which is crucial here. For integers, it is exp of qx0 is the same as e power qx0. So, once I have this, exp of x0 raised to the power q equals e power q x0, I will raise both to the power 1 by q, I will get exp of x0 is e power x0, okay. So, this is the sequence in which uh, one goes. Um, so, so, for instance, anything raised to the power 1 by q is uh, monotonically increasing, you can prove all that. So, it is monotonic, so you can take both on both sides and you will get exp of x0 is e power x0, okay. So, this is the uh, result here. Once again, this shows it for uh, let us say positive x0, right. And then uh, if, if you want to go to negative x0, then p or q can become negative, you can simply use the inverse property, okay. So, once you show something positive, the same thing is sort of true for, uh, in this case, it is sort of true for negative x0 by the inverse property, okay, right. exp of x0 times exp of minus x0 equals 1, and this is uh, e power x0. So, for minus x0 also, it will become e power minus x0. Okay, so this is a powerful property. Notice this what is happening here. So, this exponential function, even though you have a power series, you do not have to keep evaluating the power series over and over again. You evaluate it once for e, for any other number, it is just raising it to that power. Okay, but anyway, this power series is also good to have, right? Power series is nice to expand. Okay, the last statement is for real numbers. So, once you have rational numbers, you can extend it to real numbers for any x real exp of x is e power x. What a statement, right? So, I will write it down in uh, more clarity in the next slide, but really this is the final total intimate connection between this power series based definition of uh, exp of x and the actual exponential definition of e power x, right? e power x is exp of x and e is just this 2.718 dot 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 which is which comes from this series, okay? So, this is important and the proof here is a little bit technical. We will not uh, look at it, but uh, we have seen this before, right? Because the real numbers are limits of sequences of rationals. 
and you can use that uh, to prove it for all reals okay so this is the connection i want to put it down once again for you uh, exp of x is this one plus x plus the series is the same as one plus one plus one by two factorial one by three factorial whole thing raised to the power x and this is true for every real number x okay it's 2.718 raised to the power x what a wonderful result right so e power minus x for instance is one by e raised to the power x which is 1 minus x plus x squared by 2 factorial minus so on. So, this is just one more one more function and uh, you can see this e power x and e power minus x will be sort of mirror images of each other, right. e power x goes like this and e power minus x will, will be the mirror image. So, if e power minus x, if x goes to minus infinity, e power minus x will go to infinity. If x goes to plus infinity, e power minus x will go to 0, right. The same uh, sort of uh, nice little uh, plot you can make here. Uh, with uh, with e power minus x and e power x okay so let me just summarize all the properties of e power x now okay a lot of people don't write exp of x okay so maybe in uh, mathematical numerical evaluation you write exp of x typically nobody writes exp of x right so you just write e power x all the time and we know that this is valid and we have just proved it uh, that this is valid right so e power x is continuous and differentiable everywhere the derivative is itself, if you, in fact, you can keep on differentiating any number of times. If you differentiate, you get the same thing. e power x is greater than 0 for all x. e power x is increasing for all x. And then this wonderful addition formula, e power x plus pi is e power x times e power y. We know this is true for exponentiation, right? So, this is how uh, it works out. And e power x tends to infinity as x tends to infinity. e power x tends to 0 as x tends to minus infinity. So, here is a very, very important and very crucial relationship x power n times e power minus x okay so notice what's happening to e power minus x it is decreasing and even for positive x it is sort of exponentially falling to 0 right e power minus x so if you put 5 you get 1 by e power 5 for 10 you get 1 by e power 10 so it's exponentially falling down to 0 i'm multiplying e power minus x by x power n what is happening to x power n x power n increases with x right it, it, we have seen you know x is a straight line x square is a curve like this x cube is a curve like that x cube also blows up so x power n is blowing up to infinity as x tends to infinity e power minus x is dropping down to 0 as x tends to infinity what happens when i multiply these two things i'm going to sort of get an infinity times 0 value right i'm getting an infinity times 0 and we know that that's dangerous isn't it? I have shown you in limits that in limits we do not know usually how to do infinity into 0. But however, this infinity into 0 we can resolve. It turns out x power n times e power minus x as x tends to infinity always goes to 0 for every n. e power minus x wins. Okay, x power n is going to infinity but it is not as fast as e power x. Okay, e power minus x can kill x power n for any n, n could be 1000, you know, you make it x power 1000, but e power minus x will eventually win as x tends to infinity, it will pull it down to 0, okay. So, this is a powerful, powerful and important result to remember, the fact that x power n, e power minus x becomes 0 uh, for every n, okay. The proof is actually not very hard, you know, the proof is very easy. You, you look at the n plus 1th term of e power x, for x positive sufficiently large, it is x power n plus 1 by n plus 1 factorial. We know e power x is greater than that, right? It is just one term. e power x has so many other terms. The n plus 1th term is just one term. So, e power x is greater than that. You can rearrange this. Keep 1x here, bring it down. This is just a rearrangement. You see x power n times e power minus x is less than, there is n plus 1 factorial there, but then divided by x, right? So, for a fixed n, if you, even if n is 1000, as long as it is fixed, if x is tending to infinity, this term will go to 0 and x power n e power minus x will go to 0, okay. So, that is the power of this, uh, this formula. So, this is, this is a statement that people make about e power x, right. So, e power x grows faster than any power of x for large x, okay. So, any x power n is not as fast as e power x. e power x is really, really, really fast, okay. So, there are various ways to understand that x power n has derivatives which are n x power n minus 1, eventually the derivatives run out, right. So, the derivatives seem to be positive, but their derivatives are becoming sort of smaller and smaller and smaller, they run out. 
E power x on the other hand, the derivatives don't run out, right? The, the e power x derivative is e power x, e power x, e power x, derivatives stay there, okay? So that's one of the reasons why, uh, you know, intuitively if you want to think about it, e power x becomes much, much faster than x power n for any fixed n, okay? I hope uh, this is clear to you. These properties are very, very crucial. They are used all the time in understanding models, mathematical models in which the exponential function shows up, okay? Here is a little illustration of this e power x versus x power n. I showed you, I told you that uh, e power x will eventually overtake x power n, right? However large n is, e power x is bigger, right? So instead of comparing e power x and x power n, this is a little bit difficult because the, both these values are blowing up, right? So it's better to compare something that's slightly grow, blowing up slowly, okay? So I'm going to take nth root on both sides and I'm going to compare e power x by n versus x. Both of these are the same comparison except that this x and e power x by n hopefully are growing much slower and I can plot it much more easily, okay? So I want to claim e power x by n will overtake x eventually, okay? So I've made a little uh, uh, video here, okay? Let me go back to... this and play this for you. So this is basically going to draw uh, e power x by n, this red is e power x by n and this blue is uh, y equals x, right? y equals x remains the same, e power x by n will, n will keep varying. As you vary n, you will observe that always this e power x by n overtakes. So here you can see it overtakes, but for every value, you can see that it overtakes. Notice, I mean, n is keeping on increasing. Whatever you put, I mean, is coming back again. You can see that it eventually overtakes. Uh, and once more, let's see that. So you see, eventually it overtakes. It's, uh, it may happen at 100, it may happen at 120, but it will always eventually overtake. So e power x grows faster than x power n for any integer n, okay? Uh, any integer, non-integer, any value n actually, as it turns out, okay? Uh, this concludes this lecture and in the next lecture, we'll do some problems, but for now, uh, thank you very much.